Actor Fiona Shaw and director Deborah Warner have been collaborating for over 25 years and theirs is one of the most important creative partnerships in British theatre. Their work is experimental, risk-taking and often controversial. Warner's decision to cast Shaw as Shakespeare's Richard II caused outrage in some quarters, with one critic dubbing it disastrous. Warner has directed Shaw in meaty classics, including Ibsen's Hedda Gabler, Euripides' Medea, Beckett's Happy Days, Brecht's Mother Courage and Her Children, and a dramatised version of T.S. Eliot's poem The Wasteland. Now, Warner and Shaw are teaming up again in a stage adaptation of Colm Toybean's Booker Prize shortlisted novel The Testament of Mary. Toybean wrote the script for the play with input from Shaw and Warner and it premiered in New York last year. Now they're preparing to bring this unconventional version of the Bible story to the Barbican Centre in London in May. I suppose it was very unlikely that Colin was going to write about the Blue Virgin Mary. I mean, one knows that his writing is always so um, textured and earthy. And certainly it would be a very impossible play to write only about an icon. So I was pretty excited about in what way he would be breaking the icon open. And in fact, I think what he's written is every woman, really the most ordinary person that he could invent. And the ordinariness has in it an amazing forthrightness and clarity, which runs brilliantly across the story as is told in the New Testament. She sits very much in opposition to the virgin who barely speaks in the Bible, who wears blue, who's silent and compliant. So she were his equal. This is a, a woman in acute trauma from what she's had to witness, and I think that is, uh, is profound in the theatre. I was very struck when I first read this, and I was struck by how frightening it was, really. It has terror running through its veins. If you can take away a lot of the decoration and its theological need, it's either a good story or not a good story, and all good stories have to have in it not just morality, but the immorality of being human. Um, in this case, this woman is less brave than she would like to have been. She is rejected by her son and she rejects him. These are the things that happen many mothers and sons. And in that way is more true, I think, to the human experience of family. He was graceful. He was well-mannered. And he was intelligent. And he used it all, I said to lead a group of misfits from... Certainly one wouldn't set out to shock, but certainly one wouldn't set out to soothe. That wouldn't be a theatrical intention. Well, I think it came as a bit of a surprise, to be honest. I think it came as a delight to Scott Rudin, our producer, who found 25 people outside on the first preview, but they'd made a beautiful presentation. They had banners, they'd brought a Virgin Mary with them, and they were on the far side of the street. Um, I think they thought it was the opening night, so they had to come back 33 previews later <laughs> for the premiere. People protested because they felt it was sacrilegious, but actually the piece is not at all sacrilegious, if anything, in its um, real, honest, domestic memory. It's remarkably spiritual without ever demanding one ounce of spirituality from the audience. Have you enjoyed working with me? <laughs> we have a very good conversation in rehearsal. That is what we have. And it's a 25-year-old conversation, but it doesn't feel like an old conversation. It feels like a new conversation each time. Fiona's very good for me because she pushes me and uh, maybe sometimes I might, I might push her, I hope so. She listens really like a sort of um, well. You just feel that everything you say is heard very deep down. So the more that Deborah helps root what is being said, uh, the sound of it um, has more depth for me or more, more hold, which actually, even though we work incredibly hard and very long hours often, means that the playing of it has more confidence. Bravery characterises Fiona. 
she will in rehearsal do and try anything. This time she's alone. When she's with a big group, of course, what is fantastic is that she'll lead that group as a first violin will lead an orchestra. I mean, people will absolutely follow and get better because of her. What do you think? That's very nice. <laughs> but what you say is very true about bravery. I think, I mean, bravery, it just means you have to have um, the opposite of what people think actors are, actually. You have to have no vanity. Or your vanity has to be disguised. <laughs> It's an extraordinary act of theatre making because something is happening in this auditorium as people are playing the story they think they know of this story in their heads whilst having it corrected with Colin's new story. Mm. So there's, it's an incredibly exciting and active feel within the audience. You can hear it. You can hear it crackle as people go, oh, oh, I see. Oh, I didn't think that was the story. Theatre is, you think the audience is watching us, but of course we're also watching them. And you get to know an enormous amount about Americans in the way that they respond to such a story. And I suspect we get to know a lot about English people, the way they respond to a story. We, you can't anticipate how it will be, but it will definitely be different. And um, they are the other character in the play, of course. And all we're doing is preparing ourselves to meet them and then perform it with each other. Who they are will perform play as well as us performing it for them.